Today we're going to take a look at the BT OpenReach full fibre to the premises installation. We've got on a new tiny ONT boxes here. As you can see, we've actually got fibre optics that come straight into the uh, premises and then Ethernet straight out. What we're going to actually do in this house here is install a patch panel centrally in the house. And you can see we've run two uh, Ethernet cables down to where the fibre comes into the house. This would be one to send the actual fibre back up to where the patch panel's to. And then I want to bring the uh, signal back down here for games, consoles, TVs, etc. And then centrally, this will plug into the uh, BT uh, Smart Hub. So what we'll do, we'll jump upstairs and we'll have a look centrally where we're going to install this patch panel and what's involved. Okay, so this is the patch box we're going to mount onto the wall. The cables will come in through the bottom here, run up this channel here, and then connect into the back of the patch panel here. Inside the cupboard here, we can see we've got uh, an extension lead. So we can actually plug in um, switch power supplies and local supplies that are required inside the patch panel here. And then this can be covered to keep it all nice and neat and tidy. So what we'll do now, to make this on the wall and we'll start connecting up some cables and we'll come back and then uh, show uh, a little bit later on when we've got it cabled up. We've now mounted the uh, distribution panel or enclosure box on the wall and we've put all the ethernet cables up through ready to be uh, connected. So the next thing we need to do is uh, figure out which cable goes where so we can actually mark the ports as we install them. So to do this you could obviously have the cables marked but if they're not marked you can use a cable toner and what I'll do is just show this. Let me switch this one on. And what you can do is take a bundle of cables. And as we run this over, you can see then we've actually uh, identified the cable where the noise is to uh, where it goes. What we'll do is we'll go down to the other end of this cable. You can see if I run through the bundle here. It doesn't come live until it goes onto this cable. So quickly we can identify where the Ethernet cable runs to. Let me uh, mark that one there. Okay, we'll go downstairs and I'll just show you the other end, what we've got plugged in to do this. So Downstairs, you can see I've got the wall sockets already terminated here. I'm plugged into the wall socket, so I've got the um, scan tool, it's set scanning. And that's basically sending the signal back up through the cable for the toner to identify. The next thing we need to do is obviously terminate all of the cables. And we'll just show you what we do there. So if we, uh, first tool is this uh, little tool, which is great for uh, stripping the cables. Um, it's got a little razor blade in there and you can adjust the height. Literally, we pop that over the cable and then one single turn. And then from there, we can uh, remove the cover and separate the pairs. So you can see inside the Ethernet cable, we've got four twisted pairs, eight cables in total. And then from here, what we then do is marry these pairs up to the individual um, cable connections here. So we've got brown, brown and white. And then we use a punch down tool. And this one's got a cut on it as well. And from there, we can literally punch down and cut the cables. So I've not done that one. It's as simple as uh, pressing this down in, lock them in, and they're done. All right. Okay, so actually back in the office now. I just wanted to run through the actual final part of the installation where we go through and actually test the cables and how it all plugs together. Um, a little bit more easier for me to do this at the desk here and actually show you some photos and videos of the various testing. So you can see in the rack now, we've actually got the patch panel fully installed and we've actually terminated all of the cables to each of the rooms and labeled the various ports as to where they go. And you'll notice up above, we've actually put an eight port switch ready for use. So if we go back down to the front room, you can see on the wall socket here, we've got the BT open reach box up here on the wall. Um, and we've got the red ethernet cable that patches into the wall socket. That wall socket then comes back obviously to the patch panel up here. Um, in the main cupboard and you can see we've actually got that linked through then to the smart hub um, The smart hub then obviously places the Wi-Fi centrally in the middle of the house and from there on the back of the smart hub We've actually got 
free Ethernet ports that can be then plugged in, as they are in this case, to the various sockets on the patch panel to connect up the TVs and games consoles over Ethernet. And as I said earlier, we've also placed in the rack here, as you can see above, a network switch. And this is an eight port switch. Um, I'll leave a link at the end to a test of that in our lab. And we can learn more about that. But that will enable one of the Ethernet ports from the Smart Hub to plug into this switch and then a cable to plug between there and each of the rooms to distribute Ethernet to them as and when they're required. So getting from the cables to here, we've obviously got the testing stage. So how do you go through and actually make sure the cables you've connected work and meet the standard? Um, there is a choice of multiple testers. You can actually use a sort of a 10 pound tester, something like this. Uh, see if I can get this in focus for you. And this basically is a continuity tester. You plug one end into the wall and then the other end, um, you press the button and it runs through and checks connectivity between each of the cables. Moving up from that, you can get to the tester where we actually use to do the toning. And this will go through and do more mapping and much more advanced testing. And you also get multiple um, remotes. Um, each of these remotes has got a little number on. And with this one, you actually get eight. So we could plug one of these into each of the rooms and then just go through the patch panel all the way through and test them all. Both of these testers just confirm the cables are connected. They don't test to any standard. At the high end then, we've actually got a Fluke um, DSM 8000 tester, um, which is a $15,000 tester. And what I'm gonna do is actually bring up now and show you the testing with this. So you can see running the test here with this tester, and this is actually sending a full 10 gigabit signal through the cable. And you can see, again, this measures the length and all of the various return losses and can actually produce a full report to certify the cables. And you see that literally plugs straight into the socket and there's another unit that plugs back in to the other end to test. Um, one of the interesting things with this tester is it will pick up and certify. I'm gonna show here another test now where we've actually done a test here. You can see this has actually failed. And this is plugged into a wall socket here. That socket is actually a Cat5e socket on the end of a Cat6 installation. And you'll see if I actually go back to the start of the test here and run the test, actually run this through. And on a test, this tester also takes about 10 seconds to do a full Cat10 certification. Let's let this run through. And you see it's generating diagnostics and that's because it's failed. So it's actually gonna look at what the fault is. Is it a break in the cable? Is the cable flooded? Is it underwater? Um, and we can see here, we've actually got some info. If we press the fault, it's telling us zero, zero meters. So at the end of the plug here, there's a fault. Check the remote. And if I take that off, you'll see that would actually be a Cat5v socket. Let's um, have a look at some of the other problems we're likely to get. Okay, so I've got the other test there. If I run a Cat6 test, which is good enough for 99% of the installations and home test, you can actually see here that we're showing that we're missing the twisted pair on one and two. So we're now left with this problem that we've got eight cables running between the installation and the remote. And this is showing that there's no connectivity between pins one and two. So what do we actually do to resolve this? So with this tester, we can actually go on and run a length test. And you can see here, I've run the length test and it's actually showing me that it's open at 1.4 meters and that the rest of the pairs are actually 12.7 meters long. Let's run the same test here with the Fluke tester. Um, if I change over here and run a test with the Fluke and do the same um, tests and do a length test. And we can see straight away on the fluke units here, we can see that it's uh, 1.2. And if I do a wire map, we can see straight away, again, if I just pause this here, we can see that from here, uh, it's actually 10 centimeters from the end of the plug. And the other end's got 12 and a half meters connected to it. And it's cable pin one. So this is actually telling us that on the back of the patch panel in the rack, 
um, pin one's not properly terminated, it's not actually been punched down fully, um, which actually enables us to very quickly find where the fault is. Let's jump in again and look at another scenario with the testers. I've got a, another test here where we can go through and run a test. So if I do a cable map here with the lower cost tester, you can see straight away we've got um, what looks like a real mess. So again, trying to figure this out is a little bit difficult. You can see we've got various cross mappings. Um, let me run the same test now with the Fluke. So again, we'll run this. Uh, it's just asking me to want to save the previous result. The Fluke will actually produce a PDF report of all of the ports. So if you're doing a installation, you can certify. So you can see here we've got a bad wire map and visually it's showing us the colors where they're connected so we can actually go to uh, the correct end and fix where they are so you can see in this case it's actually the remote end the wall socket that uh, obviously when this was terminated the, uh, the actual connector was put on very badly and the uh, orange and brown pairs were actually muddled up and again the green and the white were twisted so we know that we need to go to the uh, remote end of this socket and change all of those cables to that. So I hope you've uh, found this video useful. Um, if you have, please consider liking. Uh, if you've got any questions, please comment below. Uh, hopefully this has inspired you to uh, consider installing a structured Ethernet installation into your own house. Um, it does make a big difference in terms of games, consoles, computers and improving performance. Uh, Wi-Fi has only got so much capability and again not all devices unless you're on the latest uh, wi-fi 6 can be sending and receiving data at the same time but over time certainly we'll find that uh, the fiber link to the house will be increased up to sort of 10 gigabit um, in the uk here we can get 10 gigabit fiber connections now in certain parts of the country and you'll find virtually with wi-fi depending on whether you're 2.4 you'd be restricted to getting about 60 70 megabytes per second so less than uh, sort of 1% of the throughput of a 10 gig link on uh, 2.4 and up to really a maximum of about one gigabit over Wi-Fi with uh, Cat6 or a Wi-Fi 6. So getting an Ethernet cable to computers, games, consoles, TVs will make a huge difference as they're very bandwidth hungry and this will uh, obviously enable data to be sent straight to and from the internet with very little interference and obviously free up the Wi-Fi for your mobile phones. Thank you.